Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Mass media adored poor things, showering it with praise and accolades, including numerous Oscars. They fervently promote its messages and philosophy, pushing for its widespread acceptance. Beneath its surface appeal, lies a troubling agenda, subtly indoctrinating viewers with the elite's worldview, even in its intact towards children. Although visually stunning with impeccable performances, there's an unsettling quality to the film. Its dissonant music and disturbing scenes deliberately challenge viewers. Bella's disturbing actions, like playing with a dead man's body, leave a disturbing impression. While well, based on Alasdair Gray's novel, the movie simplifies its themes to focus on Emma Stone's childlike character engaging with older men, neglecting the book's depth and political commentary. Emma Stone's role in Poor Things echoes Anna de Armas' performance in Blonde, where scenes seem designed to degrade her sexually. Despite criticism, de Armas earned an Oscar nod. Similarly, Stone's character engages in provocative scenes, leading to her 2024 Oscar win. Ironically, the movie is said to be feminist, although it was written by a man, directed by a man, and based on a book written by a man. But that doesn't matter, because, through symbolism, the core message goes way deeper than feminism. It is about distorting everything that is pure, good, and natural. Here's a look at poor things. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. The movie opens with an ironic warning about tobacco depictions, trivializing serious content. It swiftly transitions to a woman's suicide, setting a grim tone. The woman, pregnant, is found by a scarred man known as God, who experiments on humans. Despite being called God, he's portrayed as more of a creator akin to Frankenstein. His main creation, Bella Baxter, is a grotesque hybrid, a baby's brain inside a woman's body. God's compound harbors other unnatural creatures, reflecting his corrupting influence on nature. This sets the stage for a chilling exploration of his twisted experiments and their consequences. At the movie's beginning, Bella can barely talk or walk, and at one point, she pees herself. She has the mental age of a toddler. But that doesn't prevent men from lusting over her. Even though Bella was spinning around like a child, Max says that she's very pretty retard. Right then, the movie stubbornly focuses on Bella's ability, <laughs> including scenes of her master. In one scene, Bella looks extra childish and innocent while blowing bubbles. Then, a man called Duncan comes in, sits next to her, and touches her parts. Alright. Let's stop for a second and ask ourselves. Is this normal? Did the movie find a loophole to depict child sexuality in a mainstream movie, by having a grown woman act it out? Yes, Bella has a woman's body, but she's mentally a baby. Before we can answer these important questions, Duncan takes Bella on an adventure in Lisbon, where we see them in a husband and wife scene in all kinds of positions. You can rationalize all you want, but that's what's happening. And she won an Oscar. The adult scenes are intercut with Bella exploring Lisbon while looking like a child. She walks clumsily and awkwardly, heavily indicating that her brain is far from being adult. In these scenes, Bella is a bit more coherent. She has the mental age of maybe an eight-year-old, and she calls a furious jumping. While media critics found this term endearing, it mainly indicates that a performing husband and wife scene with 56-year-old actor Mark Ruffalo. Bella sends postcards to her creator, God, on which her immature mind depicts what she's been up to. 
Yes, she's fellating a train. While Duncan was having fun at first, things soured quickly. Bella's immature mind and promiscuous disposition led her to be intimate with another man. This caused Duncan to become bitter, jealous, and controlling. Meanwhile, Bella doesn't even understand what is happening, but she does know that she's losing attraction to him. She doesn't understand feelings or morality, she observes the world through the same cold scientific eyes of her creator, God. At home, God and Max, who was supposed to marry Bella, are also sad and broken. In a way, Bella cuckolds the men who develop feelings for her and want to tie her down. At this point, we realize that a feminist narrative is emerging, and Bella's development can be interpreted as the coming of age of a modern woman. More precisely, the elite's vision of what a modern woman should be. Duncan confines Bella to a cruise, unable to control her thoughts. Bella's intellectual curiosity grows, symbolized by her love for reading and philosophical debates, which Duncan dislikes. Bella tells Duncan to move, because he's blocking her son. As the movie evolves, Duncan ends up representing the patriarchy that blocks women from educating their minds. Bella's new friends also show her a side of the world she's never seen before. While stopped in Alexandria, Bella is shown the plight of poor people. The poor people scene is rather odd. It's basically how a Hollywood person disconnected from reality would imagine poor people. In this tableau shot viewed from way above, the poor people of Alexandria are lying down, while a person stacks a bunch of dead babies atop each other. This movie does not like children. So, this misery makes Bella sad, and she now wants to change the world. As we'll soon see, the answer to her quest will be... Socialism. Of course, we're watching a Hollywood movie. Meanwhile, Bella and Duncan are penniless in Paris. However, Bella quickly finds employment. Pro in a bra the madam of the brothel had the perfect argument to convince Bella to work for her. If you need money, it's the shortest route to do it. Considering that concepts of loyalty or morality do not concern Bella, this logical argument makes perfect sense to her. And, Duncan disagrees. Duncan tells Bella that being a h is the worst thing women can do. On the other hand, the brothel's madam says that Bella is a woman plotting her course to freedom. In the feminist context of the movie, Bella becoming a prostitute is therefore portrayed as an empowering move that's in opposition to Duncan's patriarchal control. It is also a way for Bella to discover herself in the world. The brothel is physically connected to the church next to it. Is the movie trying to tell us something about Christianity? The brothel's madam also convinces Bella that the degrading things she must do for her clients are part of the experience. We must work. We must make money. But more than that, we must experience everything. Not just the good, but degradation, horror, and sadness. This makes us whole, Bella. It makes us people of substance, not flighty, untouched children. When we know the world, the world is ours. Now, go and f someone. This quote sums up the movie's core message, and there is much to unpack. First, what's wrong with untouched children? They're supposed to be untouched. This movie does not like children. Second, this quote reflects the dualistic worldview of the occult elite, where it is believed that the bad, the evil, and the horrific are of equal value as the pure, the good, and the godly. It is by uniting the two that a person becomes illuminated. Finally, the madam probably doesn't believe in what she's saying. She wants Bella to do the degrading things requested by her clients so she can profit from her, the same way the elite wants us to believe in their indoctrination, so they can profit from us. The movie makes sure we see Bella being degraded in every way possible. Also, weirdly, we are also watching actress Emma Stone being degraded as well. That's what you need to do to win an Oscar nowadays. Also, Bella apparently discovers that she's bisexual. Bella's girlfriend is also a socialist. She tells Bella that a socialist is someone who wants to change the world for the better. To which Bella instantly replies, then I am that too. The movie's unabashed promotion of a specific political current is odd, but unsurprising. This movie wants to indoctrinate. Appropriately enough, the elite is trying to create a socialist world government. If the movie had promoted any other political current, elite-owned mass media wouldn't have praised it. 
So, Bella reflects what the elite want women to be. And her actions cause Duncan to lose his mind completely. Duncan ends up in the loony bin. While Bella is the creation of a man named God, Duncan sees her as the exact opposite. He has sent a demon at a large into the world. The devil wrapped in an alluring body that cannot be satiated, and a mind that picks people apart, stitch by stitch, like a bloodied and burned rag doll shot out of an elephant's arse. While the demon is at large, her creator is dying. When Bella learns that God is dying of cancer, she leaves Paris and travels back to London. The fact that God dies in the movie is symbolic as, in the elite's philosophy, men are gods. After God's death, Bella takes over as the mad scientist. In the final scene, everything ends perfectly according to the elite's vision for humanity. Bella placed the brain of a goat into the head of her mother's controlling husband. This man is technically Bella's father. But not anymore. He's a goat now. The movie ends with a shot of Bella reading. She is now an accomplished socialist bisexual lady. Every man who tried to control her is either dead or completely broken. Or a goat. The end. Poor Things basically says that these disturbing things are good and desirable in an enlightened society. At least the movie got something right. It warned us about tobacco depictions. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.